Today I want to look at the motion of a charged particle traveling between parallel plates. So I've illustrated the, uh, the problem over here on the board. So we've got two plates. One is positively charged with a charge density plus sigma. The other one is negatively charged with a, uh, the opposite charge on it. We have a small particle with a charge Q uh, moving into the region where the, uh, there's a constant field. And the initial velocity is V0. And what I want to do now is I want to look at the motion of this charged particle when it's traveling between uh, the parallel plates. So let's look at a couple simple cases. Uh, the first is what if there's no charge on the plates? Uh, if there's no charge on the plates, uh, the particle is simply going to continue along this uh, dotted line and will not be deflected. Okay, it continues along the dotted line because there's simply no force acting on the charge. Uh, then the other case we can do is, what if there's a lot of charge? Right? If there's a lot of charge on the plates, uh, one thing you should know is that the field between the plates goes from the positive to the negative. And if we neglect things going on at the edges, the field between the plates is uniform. The magnitude of the field is simply equal to sigma divided by epsilon zero. Okay, so let's have a look now when the field is very, very strong. What's going to happen? Well, this charge is going to enter the field region, and as soon as it enters the field region, there's going to be a force acting on the charge. Now, the force acting on the charge, again, since it's a positive charge, a positive charge in a field that points from uh, the top plate to the bottom plate, as soon as it enters the field region, there's a force acting on it. There's an electric force F acting on it, and the value of the force is simply the magnitude of the charge times the electric field in that region. So this is kind of a special case. Right? If the field is very, very big, and the field will be very big if you have a lot of charge on it. Okay? If I have a very large charge density, the field produced between the plates is going to be very, very big. Well, what's going to happen now is the charge is going to enter this region, and there's going to be a large force on it. Right? There's a repulsive force from the positive plate acting on the positive charge, and there's an attractive force on the positive charge going through uh, this region. So if the field is very, very big, this is what it's going to do. It's simply going to curve downward and eventually hit that negative plate. But we don't want that to happen, okay? Uh, the question is, what is the maximum charge, big Q, uh, that I can put on the plates so that I have the maximum deflection of that positive charge. So if you think about it, if I put just the right amount of charge on these plates, I'm going to generate just the right electric field such that the charged particle, as soon as it enters the region, it starts getting deflected. And if it's just right, I'm going to get this maximum deflection. And the little charge Q is going to exit uh, the field region at some particular angle. It's not going to hit the plate and it's not going to go straight. It's just going to be the maximum deflection that you can have for that particular charge. So let's go to the whiteboard and see how we can calculate uh, what value of uppercase Q I need to put on the plates in order to have this maximum deflection uh, for this uh, small charge moving through that region. All right, so here's our problem. We have our charge moving into the region where the field is. The first thing you should do is consider a free body diagram. We want to analyze the motion, so let's look at the forces again. Uh, there's only a single force acting on it. That's the electric force. And the magnitude of the force is simply Q times the magnitude of the electric field. Um, since there's only one force, Newton's second law says you add up all the forces. Those should be equal to ma. So the nice thing is now we have uh, an expression for our acceleration. And we simply have QE. Uh, divided by the mass of the particle. All right. The nice thing about this, this is a constant acceleration. And that means acceleration. That means now that we can use all our kinematic equations in order to analyze the motion of this charged particle uh, between the plates. So let's go to the next page and uh, see how we would do that. Okay, so now let's look at the kinematics. Uh, in the x direction, well, in the, in the x direction, we want to look at the displacement in the x direction. Call that delta x. 
and that's simply going to be equal to the initial velocity in the x direction, which is v naught, uh, times the time. Uh, the other quantity we want to know uh, during the trajectory is the velocity in the x direction at any time, and that's simply going to be equal to the initial velocity. There's no acceleration in the x direction in this problem because the electric field is constant, the electric force is constant, so that's it. Let's look at now in the y direction. Our displacement y is going to be equal to, um, what do we have? Our initial velocity in the y direction. Uh, there is no initial velocity in the y direction. Okay, So that term vanishes. So you, typically you'd have a term like this. And if we define a coordinate system where positive x is this way, and let's make positive y in this direction, so our acceleration will be positive. We have another contribution here, which is 1 half at squared. Uh, however, this term, as I mentioned, equals to 0 because there is no initial velocity. Initially, I'm just going along the x-axis. Uh, the other thing I want to know is what is the velocity at any motion, uh, any point in time in the y direction? Again, it's the initial velocity in the y direction, uh, which is 0. And we can't forget our acceleration term plus acceleration times time. Okay, there you have it, folks. So we have kinematic equations that tell us the x displacement, the y displacement, and the velocity components at any instant in time. So now we can go back and analyze the problem and find what we're looking for. So this problem is exactly identical to throwing an object horizontally from a cliff and you want to see how far it goes. We want the range in this particular problem, so the distance it travels, to be uh, the distance of the plates or the length of the plates, which is L. And we're going to want to set our y displacement to be the maximum value. Okay? When the y displacement is equal to d over 2, we're going to get the maximum deflection of this charged particle when it goes through the plates. So let's go to the uh, next page and set that problem up. Okay, so we want our maximum deflection. Or we want to calculate what the maximum deflection is going to be. Well, all we really need to do is we really need to set the y displacement equal to half the distance between the plates because I'm starting already at the midpoint. So I really want my y displacement to be d over 2, and positive d over 2 because the displacement is down. That there is going to be equal to 1 half. What is my acceleration? The acceleration, I can write it in terms of the field, uh, qe over m, uh, over uh, multiplied times t squared. Therefore, I still have the, uh, the time in this equation. So I need to find a way to eliminate the time. And in order to do that, I can use my x displacement. Because really what I want to do is I want this maximum displacement to be when the particle is just exiting the plates. And that's going to be when my displacement in the x direction is equal to L. When do I have that? I'm going to have the displacement is going to be equal to the length of the plates uh, when the time is simply L divided by my initial velocity. Okay. So if you go ahead and substitute that into our uh, equation over here for the y displacement, we get d over 2 equals to 1 half uh, qem, and we're going to have l over v naught squared. So this here is the maximum displacement, and this here is really going to be the maximum electric field that's going to give me that displacement. Okay. I can actually just isolate for that. And what do I get? Well, the one half terms cancel out. Uh, just do a little bit of algebra and simplify. So the maximum electric field that I'm going to get, or that will produce the maximum displacement, uh, is going to be uh, m d. Make sure I do things correctly here. Divide through by the charge. And then I have to eliminate this term, the L over V naught term. I bring that over to the other side, it becomes V naught over L, and it's still squared. So here's the maximum value of the electric field. Now the question was posed a little bit differently. I asked, what's the maximum charge on the plate? 
Uh, but that's very easy because we're looking at parallel plates and the field produced by parallel plates, at least in the region between the plates, is sigma divided by epsilon zero. Okay. And the sigma is simply the surface charge density. It's the amount of charge you have per unit area uh, of plate and we still have the epsilon zero constant. So the maximum electric field is going to be for any given geometry whenever I maximize uh, the charge density or maximize the charge on the plates. So our last step, putting everything together now, uh, let me make a bit more room here. Okay, so we're gonna have Q max, is going to be equal to uh, the area epsilon zero mass times uh, distance of the plates divided by Q and V naught over L squared. All right, so there's the final answer expressed in terms of the geometry of the plate, uh, the area and the distance and in terms uh, and the length and also in terms of some of the properties of the charge. So uh, the small charge Q, the mass of the charge M, and also the initial velocity V0. Okay. So this makes a lot of sense actually if the particle is going very, very fast in order to get it to have a maximum displacement here when I'm between the charges, or between the plates rather, it's going very, very fast. You'd expect that uh, you would need more charge on the plates in order to achieve this deflection in a fixed uh, length. Okay, there you have it folks. Um, hopefully you understand that. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments.